Hello kids, in this video I have provided the notes on the poem Tiger by George Leslie Norris. Some of the extra word meanings. Velvet, soft downy skin that covers an animal. Snarling, make an aggressive growl. Sliding, able to move smoothly along a surface. Plump, having a full rounded shape. Bearing, Uncover, ignoring, refuse to take notice of, vivid, producing powerful feelings and clear images in the mind, rage, violent uncontrollable anger, brilliant eyes, shining with light. Some of the antonyms from the poem. Quiet, loud, plump, thin or slender or skinny, long, short, edge, middle, logged, unlogged or opened, last, first or early or initial, edge, middle, brilliant, dark or gloomy. Question and answers. Question 1. How does the tiger move about in his cage? Answer. The tiger moves about quick, quietly as though it were stalking a prey. Question 2. Find a word in the first four lines that tells us about the tiger's mood. The first four lines of the poem indicate the tiger's rage. Question 3. Why does the speaker think a tiger should be in water hole? Answer. In a tiger's actual home, the water hole is a place where other animals come to drink water. This is the place where the tiger can hunt its prey. But in the zoo, the tiger does not get to hunt. The speaker thinks that the tiger should be there in a jungle, doing what it naturally does instead of waiting for someone to give it food. Question 4. Is the tiger happy to see visitors at the zoo? Answer. The tiger does not like visitors at the zoo. We know this because he ignores them and walks away. Number 1. He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on paths of velvet quiet in his quiet rage. Question A. What is responsible for the quiet rage of the animals? Answer. Animals do not like it when they are kept in zoos and have to live within a small space. That is the reason for their rage and anger. The tiger's quiet rage is caused by his inability to get out of the cage he silently fumes with anger. Part B. Describe the image conveyed through velvet quiet. Answer. The tiger's paws are padded to give his dread the advantage of silence. The padded parts are soft, almost like velvet, and when it touches the ground, the sound is barely audible. Number 2. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, Bearing his white fangs, his claws, terrorizing the village. Part A. In which way is the description of the tiger in these lines different from you, from what you have read earlier? Answer. The lines here convey how the tiger's life should have been ideal, whereas the earlier lines describe the unfortunate and tragic circumstances of him being in captivity. Part B. Why should he snarl round the houses at the jungle's edge? Answer. The tiger should be snarling round the houses at the jungle's edge, terrorize the villagers instead of being captured by them. Part C. Why are the fangs and claws of the tiger mentioned? Answer. The fangs and claws are mentioned to point out the natural ferocity of the animal and to highlight how it belongs to the wild. Question. When does the speaker feel the tiger should be? Does he approve of the concrete cell as a home for the tiger? Answer. The tiger should be lurking in the shadows of long blades of grass or near the water hole to catch his prey. He should be snarling around houses near the jungle's edge Bearing his fangs and terrorizing the villagers. The tiger is a wild animal and should ideally be in the jungle. 
Appreciating the poem, number one, the poem shows this threat that the tiger poses as well as the helplessness of its present situation. How is this effect achieved? Answer. In the poem, the speaker draws a contrast between the tiger's present condition and where it should have been. The speaker begins by describing where the tiger is and what it is doing. Phrases like white rage and stalks in his vivid stripes highlight the tiger's power. This is further stressed when the poet talks about how the tiger should have been snarling and terrorizing humans, making us realize the true strength and purpose of the tiger. At the end of the poem, we understand the helplessness of the tiger when the speaker says that it is locked in a concrete cell, stalking the length of his cage, and that he longingly stares at the stars in the sky. Number 2. Notice the use of the word repeated in these lines. What do you think is the affecting this repetition? Part A. On pads of velvet quite in, in the, his quiet rage. Answer. The word quiet is repeated to show a contrast between what the tiger is capable of and what it is actually doing. Part B. And stares with his brilliant eyes or add the brilliant stars. Answer. The word brilliant is repeated to compare the tiger's eyes to the stars. They both are powerful and shiny. Answers to words in use. Number one, prowl, which means to walk around a place hunting for something. Number two, pounce, which means to attack suddenly, usually by jumping. Number three, chase, that means run after something or to catch it. Number four, stalk. That means move very quietly to escape notice. Thank you.